You are looking at a live view of the Falcon 9 rocket on SpaceX Launch Pad 39A, preparing for liftoff in just about 10 minutes from now at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, 2 p.m. Universal Coordinated Time. Welcome to the live webcast of the U.S. Air Force Orbital Test Vehicle 5 mission. I'm Michael Hammersley, a materials engineer in our electronics group, and today SpaceX is launching the U.S. Air Force's X-37B Orbital Test Vehicle from historic launch pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. This will be the fifth launch of the X-37B and its first on a Falcon 9. The orbital test vehicle is an experimental program for a reliable, reusable, unmanned space test platform for the U.S. Air Force. The primary objectives of the orbital test vehicle are twofold. To demonstrate reusable spacecraft technologies for America's future in space, and to operate experiments which can be returned to and then examined on Earth. For today's mission, we will also be attempting to land and recover the first stage. We'll continue to cover this secondary objective once primary mission coverage has concluded. The first stage will be landing back at Landing Zone 1, or LZ-1, and today's attempt will be in daylight, which should produce some pretty incredible footage. In the meantime, keep an eye on the countdown block at the top right of your screen and you can follow along with the major milestones using the timeline at the bottom of your screen. Launch Complex 39A is the same launch pad that launched Saturn V, Apollo, and Shuttle. SpaceX leased the pad a few years ago and started launching from that pad at the beginning of this year. We've constructed a massive hangar nearby that can house both Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, which of course has three first stage boosters instead of just the one. The vehicle was rolled out of the hangar and raised to vertical on the launch pad about seven hours ago. Falcon 9 is a two-stage launch vehicle. It comprises a high-strength aluminum first stage as well as a high-strength aluminum second stage, and they are joined by a composite interstage. The X-37B payload is housed in the fairing sitting atop the second stage. And here you can see some footage of the X-37B inside the fairing after it was encapsulated as it's being moved to uh, mate to the top of the second stage. Uh, the X-37B is a little plane that is standing upright, a little plane, a space plane that is standing upright inside of that fairing. We're also attempting a land landing today 14 kilometers away from the launch site at Landing Zone 1 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. Landing Zone 1 is a concrete pad uh, 100 yards across. It's the length of a football field. The first successful landing at that pad was nearly two years ago when we delivered 11 Orbcom satellites to low Earth orbit. In total, we've had 15 successful landings, with the most recent occurring on August 24th of this year. Now, as mentioned before, we'll conclude coverage of the primary mission following separation of the second stage, but we'll continue to cover the landing attempt as the first stage makes its way back towards uh, landing zone one. Quick status update on Falcon 9. The launch director conducted a go no go poll at T minus 78 minutes, and everything is proceeding smoothly. Falcon 9 is still 
uh, loading propellant. Uh, fuel on both stages is complete. The fuel, of course, being liquid kerosene, or RP-1, stands for Rocket Propellant 1, and oxidizer, uh, which is uh, our very cold, densified liquid oxygen. Um, first stage is about complete with liquid oxygen load. It's about 90-95%. Second stage is about 80%. Uh, the next major step is opening the pre-valve sitting between the stage one propellant tanks and the stage one engines in order to chill in the turbo pumps uh, prior to ignition and that's occurring right about now. Uh, ground winds are looking very calm and though we're watching some thick upper altitude cumulus clouds at the moment we're still go for launch as far as weather is concerned. Now let's like a, take a closer look at exactly what Falcon 9 is launching into orbit. We have ignition. The X-37B Orbital Test Vehicle, or OTV, is the nation's first unmanned space plane. Managed by the U.S. Air Force Rapid Capabilities Office, the Boeing-built X-37B is a highly flexible testbed platform for a variety of on-orbit demonstrations. This reusable system allows hosted experiments to be returned, inspected, modified, and flown again at dramatically reduced cost. The X-37B testbed platform is unique because we can tailor our missions to specific user needs and return experiments back for post-flight inspection. The X-37B is designed to fly and test new technologies, reduce technical risk early in product design, and validate system performance. It has completed four successful flights accumulating over 2,000 days of on-orbit demonstrations. The vehicle provides experiments with power, data, commanding, thermal, and attitude control. The X-37B has repeatedly achieved rapid experiment integration timelines, proving itself to be a responsive test platform. Leveraging the existing X-37B infrastructure and reusing the platform allows users to focus their investment on the experiment and developing new technologies. The Air Force Research Laboratory Hall Effect Thruster Experiment highlights the value of this reusable space plane. This experiment, flown on OTV-4, validated performance enhancements that could only be tested in a space environment. Utilizing the X-37B enabled this complex experiment to be flown in less than 24 months. OTV-5 continues to advance the performance and flexibility of the X-37B as a space technology demonstrator. Today's launch of OTV-5 is the first flight of an X-37B on a SpaceX Falcon 9. The ability to launch the X-37B on multiple platforms will provide responsive and assured access to space. Following the OTV-4 landing in Florida, the program is consolidating launch, recovery, refurbishment, and experiment integration in the repurposed orbiter processing facility. This consolidation reduces processing time and positions the program to be even more responsive. The reliability, reusability, and responsiveness of the X-37B will fundamentally change how we perform future space missions. The X-37B, flying tomorrow's technologies today. If we successfully land today, this will be SpaceX's 16th recovered stage. The next mission using a flight-proven booster will be the Echo Star 105 SES-11 mission, uh, scheduled to launch no earlier than October. Uh, the booster for that mission originally flew the CRS-10 mission, which delivered supplies to the International Space Station in February of this year. Uh, reliability is one of the most important, uh, reusability, excuse me, is one of the most important steps in bringing down launch costs and improving access to space in furtherance of SpaceX's ultimate mission of getting to Mars. Now, as with all our missions, landing the booster continues to be a secondary objective, and it's important to remember that our primary mission today is to get the X-37B into orbit around the Earth. Final status update. Fuel is now fully loaded. Uh, the spacecraft uh, Excuse me, um, Falcon 9 is moving towards uh, full internal power. It means it's running on its own batteries. Um, vehicle tanks are fully pressed up, currently working no issues. Uh, weather is go, range is go. Let's listen in to the last minutes of terminal count. 
stage two helium return manifold secured. Strong bag lower has ended. Strong bag set 88.3 degrees. Stage two, TBC motion nominal. Stage two, lock secured. Falcon nine is on internal power. Vehicles and self line. Ground gas close out the starter. Stage one and stage two cryolium secured. Gas cloud sets, it's complete. AFTS is ready for launch. Falcon 9 is in startup. Stage 1 and stage 2 present for flight. LDS go for launch. T minus 30 seconds. Stage one pressing two lift off pressures. Falcon 9 can minus 15 flight. seconds, stand by for terminal count. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stage one proportion is nominal. Power telemetry nominal. We've had successful liftoff of the Falcon 9. Uh, look closely, we're about to move through supersonic. You may actually see the vapor cone that forms from the shockwave if we're lucky. Otherwise, we're coming up shortly on max Q, which is maximum aerodynamic pressure, the point at which Falcon 9 is pushing hardest against the atmosphere. MVAC engine chill, uh, which prepares the second stage engine for ignition. Uh, main engine cutoff is coming up in about 40 seconds from now, shortly followed by both stage separation and then second engine start. We'll be concluding coverage of the primary mission at that point. Second stage call ups will be performed on LVN. Watch for main engine cutoff coming up shortly. Miko. Stage the bridge. Stage the bridge. Now we've 
had successful second stage separation and ignition. Uh, notice the vehicle is currently, or the first stage is currently doing a fast flip maneuver and a boost back burn. The fast flip is to get it headed back towards landing zone one as quickly as possible, and the boost back burn, uh, or to get it in the right orientation to head back, and the boost back burn actually pushes it back towards landing zone one. We've got three engines burning at the moment, though we're in the outer reaches of the atmosphere, so you can't actually see any visible flame, but you'll notice uh, indications that the engines are on just above the first stage there in this shot. Stage one with that current shutdown. The boost back burn has now ended. Notice that the vehicle is still climbing. And there you saw the grid fins just opened up. Uh, these grid fins are uh, recently moved to being made out of titanium, which is a much higher temperature material than aluminum, and that's better able to stand the uh, high temperatures of re-entry. You'll also notice the uh, brief spurts of what appear to be white smoke. Those are our nitrogen thrusters. And those control the orientation of the vehicle uh, when the grid fins aren't able to, uh, because there's no atmosphere. The grid fins, of course, requiring atmosphere to operate. First stage, continuing its parabolic arc, heading towards landing zone one, starting to descend back towards Earth. We're still uh, about a minute and a half or so away from the re-entry burn, which is going to slow the vehicle down uh, to only a couple times the speed of sound before re-entering the atmosphere. Re-entry burn coming up in about one minute. As you can see, the speed of the first stage is still rapidly increasing. Uh, the re-entry burn is going to slow that back down in order to keep those aerodynamic forces upon re-entry at a minimum. Those cold gas thrusters still adjusting the uh, attitude of the first stage. The tree startup. There's the reentry burn. will last for another uh, 15 seconds or so, rapidly decreasing the entering velocity. If you shut down. Successful conclusion of the re-entry burn. Uh, you can notice uh, that's ground underneath Falcon 9 there, uh, heading toward landing zone 1. We're about to slow back down through the speed of sounds. You notice those vibrations as that is coming up. Stage one, ASPS has stage. Stage one is transonic. Coming up in just a few seconds now, we're going to begin the landing burn. That will slow the vehicle down for a gentle touchdown.
Landon Burton started. This is a single engine burn, which allows for more control. And there you can see it on the screen on your right there, descending through the clouds, headed towards the concrete pad. And there we had it. You can see the landing legs deployed. That's Falcon 9 standing proud at landing zone 1. At that point, uh, or at this point, with the successful landing of the first stage, uh, we'll be ending today's webcast. It was a very smooth countdown. Everything proceeded nominally. Uh, weather was uh, looking potentially a bit tricky with those clouds, but ended up being a go. Smooth first stage ascent, smooth second stage separation and start, uh, and then that beautiful landing that you just saw. Uh, so we'd like to thank the Air Force for today's mission and support, the range for also providing support, and uh, to you for tuning in. If you'd like to join us at SpaceX, you can check us out at spacex.com careers. Otherwise, look for updates on the next mission on our social platforms and on our website. Thank you again for joining and see you next time. T-minus 20 seconds. Stage two tanks pressing for flight. T minus twenty seconds. Stage two tanks pressing for flight. Flight computer has control of the vehicle. Do we see anything on the sensors? That's a problem. Right now. Nothing. Say go for launch. Two minus ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two.
when you started coming in, it sounded like an explosion. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, look at this. Look just at this. Look at it. It's just sitting there. Look at that. What? Holy smokes, man. It's kind of amazing that this window of opportunity is open for life to go beyond Earth. And we just don't know how long that window is going to be open. But the thing that gets me most fired up is that creating a self-sustaining civilization on Mars it would be the greatest adventure ever, ever in human history. It would be so exciting to wake up in the morning and think that that's, that's what's happening. <laughs>